in the last stream, we were working on setting up this somewhat convoluted system of mechanism pipes, aka the basic logistical transporters, along with the logistical sorters to move a bunch of our items around the base with the main goal being to get red sand, sand and gravel over to these autosaves so that we could start uh, automatically generating resources like copper, nickel and tin, auto craft those resources in the factories and then pump them back around into their respective storage drawers over in this main sphere. Now, as you may have just noticed, the current system is fully backed up. And that is because if we look in here, uh, we are full on flint, dust, and nitre, as well as tiny coal. So all of the storage drawers uh, related to these are completely full. We can kick the system back into gear by taking some of this stuff out. Um, and at that point, everything should start moving again. We should see the crushed diorite making its way over to the uh, the crucible to make some more lava. Uh, we'll see more sand and red sand coming in uh, and everything should kind of get going again. If we go and look in these drawers, how are we doing on copper? We've got 52 copper, which is surprising. I thought we'd have about as much copper as tin. I knew we were going to get more nickel because nickel you get both from regular sand and from red sand. So I, I figured we'd have twice as much nickel. I guess maybe the chances are just higher on the tin or maybe we just got somewhat unlucky on the copper, but it seems like uh, I would have thought we'd have the same amount of tin of copper. Uh, either way, uh, let me go and like dump all of these in here for now. And one of the things I think we should definitely work on in today's stream is seeing if we can't get at least a little bit of obsidian. It shouldn't be too difficult for us, given how much lava we should have now. Uh, we currently have four buckets of lava backed up in the fire crucible, and then I believe a further four buckets of lava in the uh, smeltery itself. So we have eight buckets of lava ready to go here. And so what we should be able to do, if we go and grab the stone barrel, assuming we still have one of those lying around somewhere, we do, we could take that. And do we still have a bucket as well? We do not. That should be fine. We do have uh, 512 dust. That's another thing uh, that we are backing up on here. And between streams, I did start making yet more clay. So we should have, I think, over a stack of blocks over in here. We do. We've got 81. Perfect. So well, let's quickly grab some more clay here. We'll craft that up into the, uh, the old porcelain clay, and we'll get one more bucket. The idea here being that if we can get the lava that we're producing behind the smeltery into this stone barrel, we can then place some water on top of that stone barrel and that should turn the lava in the barrel into obsidian and at that point we can then use that obsidian for really one of two things when it comes to our storage drawers we can either use it to make draw upgrades those being these guys right here uh, these are going to double the amount of items that we can store in any given storage drawer Alternatively, we could invest in void upgrades. These are a bit more expensive, requiring eight obsidian per upgrade, and you need one upgrade per draw. Uh, what this will do is it will delete any excess items. So right now, for example, this draw is full on flint and on tiny coal. Uh, what would happen is instead of storing all of the extra flint and coal that we're producing, if we tried to pump extra flint and coal into this draw here, it would just delete any excess flint and coal. So we would always have 512. Any excess we produce would be deleted. Uh, but in doing so, we would keep the system moving and we would keep generating things like copper, nickel, and tin. Uh, those things wouldn't stop being produced because we're backing up on flint and coal. Okay, so it has been pointed out by the Twitch chat that uh, unfortunately, I am incorrect here. Normally, this is the way that you would make obsidian uh, using ex nihilo you would put lava into a stone barrel and then put water on top of it unfortunately that does not work in this mod pack you'll see there's no recipe uh, for it here and if we type in barrel uh, there's also no recipe for it here either so uh, unfortunately not possible uh, this recipe uses obsidian it doesn't make obsidian so uh alas i don't think we have what it takes to make obsidian just yet uh, which means we can't really do much about uh the storage draw situation, I think really um, our only option here would be to make a dedicated draw for things like flint and coal. And that would kind of push the problem a little further on down the line, giving us a bit more space to store all of this stuff. For now, I don't think it's a huge issue. Um, it's something I can kind of work on between streams. And so instead, let's begin looking at flint sifting because we're almost done with this quest line and we do need to start looking at generating our first 
blocks of overworld matter uh, so that we can start looking into iron sifting uh, and start getting things like iron, lapis, coal, gold, and silver. Those are going to really open up uh, what we can craft and what we can work with going forward. So in order to make overworld matter, uh, we first have to complete this tin quest here, and that is because in order to make the overworld matter, we have to put organic water, molten tin, and molten clay into the smeltery. Thankfully, each time you do this, you do get 20 blocks of overworld matter, so it's not uh, not too bad of a recipe. One tin, one clay, and 500 millibuckets of organic water gets you 20 blocks. So we should be able to get a good number of blocks fairly quickly here. Um, however, I think before we start looking to do this, we should probably look at making our smeltery bigger because we are going to have to start putting a lot more stuff into the smeltery, and it would be ideal if we could smelt things faster and hold more in the internal tank, especially if we're going to be generating uh, so many blocks at a time. So between streams, I have begun smelting even more seared brick. And if I'm not mistaken, we should still have a good amount of sand, gravel, and clay. And on top of that, actually, I think I made even more grout. I did, look at that, we have over a stack ready to go. So we'll throw that in with some more tiny coal. Uh, for now, we'll craft up the 64 seared brick that we do have into some more seared bricks. And from there, I think it's probably about time that we switch out the kind of thin three by three smeltery that we currently have uh, into a slightly wider five by five smeltery. So this is currently empty. I'm fairly certain that the Tinker's tank does retain the lava that's inside of it. So if we break this, I yeah, we don't lose the lava, which is perfect. So we're not gonna lose anything by breaking this here. So let's just FTB Ultimine most of this down. So instead of having just this one block in the middle, we're going to have a three by three in the middle. We're going to move the controller over to here. Uh, we'll still have the drain next to that. And we will still have the chute to the left, like so. We will probably maybe end up putting down more drains today so we can pull out all of the overworldian matter um, really as fast as we can. And then essentially we're just gonna fill this in like so, like so. And we are gonna have to move this pipe. Ideally, I don't want to lose the lava that's in there, but I don't really know if I can avoid losing that lava at this point in time. So Chet has uh, suggested that maybe this works. It totally does, beautiful. Um, I think I'll also do this as well, because I would like to keep that bucket of lava uh, that's in the barrel as well. We can always pull that back out using a, a flopper or something along those lines in the future. For now though, let's just fill this in, boom and boom. And so this should be a working smeltery. It is, and you'll see now we have significantly more slots on the left here, which is perfect. And uh, we should be able to fairly easily actually make this a bit taller as well, like that. Much like with the smaller smell tree, that is also going to make it uh, able to hold significantly more. And uh, going forward, we could even add uh, more layers to this as well. I did take the grout out of the blast furnace here uh, because Chet, once again, did point out that uh, you can actually smelt the grout in the smeltery and you get double the number of ingots so in a regular blast furnace one grout gets you one seared brick whereas in the smeltery here uh, one grout gets you two seared brick so we can essentially double the number of seared bricks that we're going to get by smelting the grout down in the smeltery and of course what we can also do here is uh, extract into a basin now i think what i might do is i might move this seared drain let me take these out. I don't think that matters. I think the controller retains its inventory even if you break the smeltery. But just to be safe, I think I'm going to move this over to here because I think I want to get maybe like three drains down. So a drain here, a drain here, and a drain here. That's going to allow us to put down five basins or uh, tables. So either casting basins or casting tables so that we can pull out things very quickly. I think we're probably going to want to have maybe for the time being like just five basins so that we can start pulling out a ton of blocks of seared brick and we can also pull out later today um, a ton of overworldian matter as well so uh, for now let's go and throw you back down there let's throw all of the grout back in and then let's look at making at least two more of these seared drains for that we are going to need some copper which i think right now we actually probably don't have at least not in ingot form i think the only thing that we currently have in ingot form is constantin right here However, we do have 52 uh, copper chunks ready to go. And so if we just throw a few of those uh, in over here, just as soon as that grout is done, if we're gonna pull those ingots out, we are going to need some more sand casts. Thankfully, we do have 14 of those lying around. 
For now, we'll put this down right about here, but we probably will end up moving that and replacing it uh, with a casting basin once we start pulling out uh, the overworld matter and whatnot. But for now, boom, and boom. We'll drop you in there. Once again, seared brick, like so. And as soon as the copper is smelted, we'll move it to the bottom and we'll begin pulling that out. So four copper ingots later, we can do this and this. That gets us two more seared drains. Uh, we might also have to make at least one more batch of seared faucets as well. And of course, we are going to have to get some more seared bricks. In fact, I think I might smelt some of these over in here. Um, you can pull the seared bricks out using the, uh, the smell train. So for example, I could put the sand down, I could make it into an ingot cast, and then I could pull the seared stone out and I would get a seared brick the thing that I would need to make more casting basins, uh, but it's a lot more tedious than just smelting it in the blast furnace. So I think for now, uh, that should be fine. We're not too light on grout. Let's replace both of these, boom and boom. And then we'll just put all of the seared faucets down around this guy. And then, yeah, we're gonna wanna get, I guess really as many casting basins as we can fit around here. Ideally, at least two more, I think. Okay, so not too long later, and we have to eat <laughs> because our hunger is very low, uh, but we also have uh, all of the basins down. So we have four basins and then one table in the middle here. I was going to use wooden hoppers to pull all of the items out like we did before. However, uh, the Twitch chat has bullied me into using logistical pipes instead. And so what we're gonna do here is we're going to have probably the chest for now can maybe go um, let's put the chest here, I think, like that. And then what we'll do is we'll break the block underneath that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to have pipes connected to each one of these, like so. And then we're going to have those pipes connect up to this chest, like that. So now all we have to do is just configure these guys to pull. So just right click twice or shift right click twice with the configurator, like so. And that should now automatically pull anything that uh, ends up in these basins around and into this chest here. So let us grab some levers. And we want to put these levers on top of each of the basins like this, because when we flick them, uh, that will then continually pull out uh, things into these casting basins, uh, meaning that we don't have to do it manually. Uh, we should pull out the final two Constantan ingots there. Uh, just to make sure that those don't end up inside of one of these basins. And once all of that is out, we can then begin turning these on. And that's going to start pulling the seared brick out uh, into seared brick blocks, which should then get pulled around into the chest. Uh, we might as well go ahead and dump the rest of the grout here that we have, uh, because of course we can still make this furnace yet, uh, oh, sorry, the smeltery yet taller. And the taller it gets, the more that we can smelt in it simultaneously. And once we've smelted all of this uh, grout up here, we're then going to move on and start looking at that uh, overworld matter. So for that, we are going to need to get some tin. So we'll take some of this. We probably don't need a full stack of tin. Uh, that would be two stacks of tin ingots, which seems like uh, maybe slight overkill. We also need some clay. Uh, again, one clay is all that's needed. One piece of clay, not even a block of clay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that one individual clay ball equates to one ingot's worth. Yeah, and one ingot is enough to make 20 blocks of overworldian matter. So we really don't need that much clay. Like already here, we have over 200 blocks of, of overworldian matter. And again, we've got like 60 plus blocks of clay ready to go should we need them. So clay, not gonna be a problem for us. Neither is tin really. Uh, the only thing that we don't have right now to make the overworld matter is organic water. Thankfully, the organic water shouldn't be too difficult for us to make. Uh, you can make it in the smeltery itself, directly inside the smeltery. Uh, by just putting in seeds, I'm also fairly certain that, yeah, we can just put leaves in. Uh, each leaf that we put in does get us 20 millibuckets, and you need, what, 500 millibuckets in order for the 20 blocks to be made? So we need 25 leaves, one tin ingot, and one clay per 20 overworld matter. And over here, we should still have our storage drawer with a hopper botany pot, which I believe has 1,024 leaves. Yeah, it does. So we've got 1,024 leaves ready to go. We only need 25 uh, per 20 blocks. And so again, uh, we really shouldn't have a problem whatsoever making quite a large amount of overworld matter here, which I think is definitely something uh, we are going to want to do. Uh, there's an extra 17 seared stone. I am going to craft those 
into seared bricks just because I think they look a little bit nicer. And then from there, uh, we can go and make the smeltery one block taller. The Twitch chat is pointing out that you can use saplings as well uh, in the smeltery. Uh, the only reason I've gone with the leaves uh, as opposed to the saplings is because we have so many more of them. And somebody in the Twitch chat has pointed out a nice uh, even number for us here. Uh, if we put in 100 leaves, uh, which would be 36 more, like that, uh, along with one block of clay and two tin chunks, this right here, uh, all melted down in the smeltery, will get us 80 blocks of organic matter, which seems like, uh, oh, sorry, overworld matter, which seems like a good place for us to start. Now, for this to work, uh, we are going to want to get a hopper down. And in fact, it might not be a bad idea to put two hoppers down so we can start feeding these leaves in two at a time, like so. And in fact, of course, we can speed this along a little bit by putting the first batch of leaves in manually, and then from there having the hopper kind of feed them in to keep it going. I was expecting this to be a little slower. Thankfully, the leaves do melt down actually very fast, and so uh, it would appear that I'm mistaken. We don't really need the hopper whatsoever. In fact, that is just slowing us down. I should turn off the levers. That is right, Chet, so we don't get any overflow. And then back in here, let's finish off the last batch of leaves. We'll also put in the clay and the ore chunks. Those are going to take a little longer to melt down there. But uh, once this is done, if we have enough space in here, we should get 80 blocks worth of overworld matter. And at that point, uh, we can just turn on all four of the levers that are connected to casting basins. And we should start pulling those out nice and quick. There we go. It is coming in. 80 blocks of molten overworld matter. All right, let's us engage all of the uh, extractors. It is going to take a little while for these to cool down, so it is going to take a little bit of time for all of these to pull out. But uh, they are being generated, and they should be being pulled around into this chest here. These pipes are not the fastest in the world, but it is automated, and we are getting overworld matter. Nice. So we should put down the pipe again here. Let's uh, get rid of this and do this and this. That works. Perfect. Once again, we can set that to extract. Beautiful. Uh, for now, I will put down this stone barrel again, even though we're not really going to use that at the moment. Uh, I will disconnect it as well because I don't want any more lava going in there uh, if we do manage to get the lava that's in there out. So I will go ahead and just disconnect here and disconnect here just in case any uh, shenanigans arise. Uh, so let's take some of this overworldian matter, I guess. And for now, I think we're just going to have to sift this manually. So uh, do we still have a couple of sieves lying around? We do. We've got six in here. And we have three flint meshes. So I guess we'll take three sieves uh, temporarily. I'm going to put these down like here. This is obviously not that permanent location. But for now, it's going to help us sift a little bit of overworld matter. So now we're finally starting to get things like iron, things like uh, lapis, prosperity shards, lead, silicon, redstone, and coal. These are all the resources that we're now finally getting. Uh, let me once again dump some stuff in here. Uh, we can put some of this stuff right into its respective drawers and of course some of those items into our backpack here that i should not forget about but now we're finally starting to get iron and we should also be able to start completing some of these quests here so uh, let's scroll back up uh we oh of course we don't have the quest unlocked yet because we need to get one like singular piece of tin so let me throw one tin chunk into the smell tray uh, we'll then pull that out the old-fashioned way using the sand cast So I foolishly didn't turn off the extractors here before I extracted. I wonder though, I think you might be able to, in, in what could possibly be the jankiest setup possible, I think it might be possible either to use a fluid pipe to move this or to just do something like this, where you do that and then you use the faucet to pull the tin out of here. It's extremely janky, but it totally works. <laughs> and we get the tin. Look at that, beautiful. And that quest is complete. Uh, let's quickly do the same thing with the other side as well. Because we also do have... Oof, uh, we also do have some more tin over here. Okay, so once that's done, once we've got all that back, we can put that back down. And I'll leave a, a blank sand cast in there for future use as well. So now that those quests are complete, let's uh, claim those free sea books there. The next quest up here is for a ceramic bucket full of seawater. So the seawater is made in 
a barrel with overworld matter beneath it. The barrel there is full of water. So earlier we did make two buckets here, which is perfect. Uh, we are going to have to grab one of our wooden barrels here because our stone barrel is currently somewhat uh, preoccupied. And then from there, I guess we can just quickly go and grab a little bit of water from the sea. And if we drop that into this barrel, of course, once we placed it above some overworld matter, like so, that I keep forgetting, you can't put the water directly in, you have to do it with the flopper. And right now our current flopper is preoccupied making clay. So I think we are gonna have to make a new flopper here. Uh, the good news is that uh, we should have a bunch of wooden hoppers ready to go. So in fact, making a new flopper here is actually gonna be fairly easy for us. We just, need to, uh, we just need to grab one of those wooden barrels, boom and boom. And then can I just do this? I totally can, nice. So that is in. And once that fills up with the full bucket worth of water, we should see that slowly but surely transform into seawater, which we can then pull out with our ceramic bucket. From there, we can use that seawater with more overworld matter to make prismarine. So we'll take this out just to complete the quest there. We'll then put it back in via the flopper. Once that's filled up, we can then uh, right click in the overworld matter and we should be good to go. We've also completed a bunch of quests down here. Let's bulk claim all of those. And actually quite a few of these quests shouldn't be too difficult. The iron chunk quest we can already complete. Perfect. As per usual, I'm assuming we're gonna have to smelt up that iron chunk in our smeltery. So let's uh, throw that in over there. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's also chomp down on some cooked salmon. Beautiful. Is this done? It is. We'll right click with the overworld matter. And that gets us our first bit of Prismarine, which is very nice indeed. And that's almost all of these quests here complete. The only quest left up at the top is all the coral. Coral seeds can be found when sieving overworld matter in a waterlogged sieve. So presumably here, all we would have to do is like take one of our sieves, which do currently have a bit of uh, overworld matter in them. Uh, presumably all we would have to do is take one of these sieves, place it into water. And in fact, we might have some water over here, we totally do. So can I place a sieve in this water without getting rid of the water? I can, and then we place in the mesh. And then if we sift here, we get coral. And then we can use that coral in a barrel with more seawater to get the blocks of coral. I'm actually not too sure if there's much of a use for the coral, at least not just yet. Maybe it's just aesthetic, like it looks nice, but it might also be used for, uh, for crafting in the future, but that's good to know. So we can get the coral, should we like. I think it might not be a terrible idea, chat, for us to take this barrel here. It looks like we're gonna have to make a, a fair bit of seawater, especially if we're going to want to complete the chapter challenge quests, uh, because there is a quest to make 32 sea lanterns, and for that, uh, we need a bunch of prismarine shards and a bunch of prismarine crystals, uh, both of which we can get from breaking down prismarine with a hammer. So if we're gonna get a lot of prismarine to make all the sea lanterns, we're gonna have to do this quite a bit. And so I think I might do what I've done with my clay, which I think I mentioned in a YouTube video, but I might not have done. Um, but the idea is, did I get that back? I actually don't know. But the idea is that uh, because we just need an unlimited water source above the flopper, all I've done is I've just put the flopper out in the ocean. So it automatically has unlimited water above it and that just funnels down into this uh into this barrel here so i think what we might do is maybe just like right here if we do a similar thing here where we get our barrel and let's say we put that there so we'll put one hopper here that's going to be for putting in the overworld matter later on down the line uh we do need to get out there and put the flopper down that should be fine and we also need to put a chest here and we're going to put a, a wooden hopper behind that uh, to pipe the finished prismarine into that chest. Uh, in the future, if we end up making a lot of prismarine, we could replace that chest with a storage drawer. Uh, but for now, I think a chest is probably gonna do the job just fine. And just to make sure we don't die here, I think I will grab uh, one of those balls and make a quick ball of water. One thing that I don't think I've mentioned yet uh, is that in the newer update here, we do have this guy, the potion of water breathing. Uh, and there is a quest for us to make it here, provides three minutes of water breathing. Uh, to make it, we need a glass bottle, four water balls, and some fish. 
And you know what? I think we might as well, given that it is a quest that we do need to complete anyway, we might as well make that happen. We do have four war cod. We've got four water balls that we can very easily craft into four balls of water. And then from there, getting the, uh, the water breathing potion really shouldn't be too difficult. We should be able to make a glass bottle nice and easily. So one, two, three, and boom. That is that quest complete. Giving us a full three minutes of water breathing. Now, someone in the Twitch chat has pointed out that I'm uh, slightly mistaken over here. We can't have a wooden hopper beneath the barrel because of course the slot uh, beneath the barrel here needs to be overworld matter. So we'll put the flopper down anyway. Again, that should now have an unlimited source of water above it. And so it should continue to fill up and keep that barrel full at basically all times. And of course the overworld matter beneath it will keep it uh, full of seawater. And from there, I guess all we're gonna have to do is extract using uh, like a logistical transporter. So maybe we move this wooden hopper to the top. So we'll get rid of the glass, we'll do this. So now anytime we wanna put overworld matter in, we can put it in up here. And then here, all we should have to do is grab one of our logistical transporters, drop that down like so, uh, disconnect it from this hopper, and then just set this one here to extract, like so. And that should pull all the prismarine down into this chest. And so we should now have an automated way of making prismarine. All we have to do is put the overworld matter into this wooden hopper. Back over here, our iron is done. So let's go and pull that out in ingot form. That's gonna complete yet another quest here. And at that point, we do unlock the solar cooker and the reflector, or at least we unlock the quest for the uh, solar cooker and the reflector. And if I'm not mistaken, this is basically a furnace that doesn't require fuel because it uses power from the sun. Free smelting smelts items with power from the sun. So to make the solar cooker, we need four iron, uh, four glass pans, and one chest. That actually seems very doable. Uh, we are gonna have to get a little bit more iron. We have one more ingots worth available in there. Uh, thankfully, we do have some overworld matter ready to be sieved. That gets us enough iron pieces to make another iron chunk there. Uh, so let's quickly grab some more sand casts. And I think we are gonna have to get uh, even more of those. Thankfully, they're very cheap and we have an, just a ridiculous amount of sand available to us. So let's do this and this. Let's also get uh, this guy in over here. And once that is smelted, we should be good to go. So uh, presumably we do also need a reflector. Up to four reflectors can be placed as shown to increase the solar cooker's speed. So you can place two either side. The solar reflector requires three iron, three slabs, and some glass. So if we're gonna make that happen, we are gonna have to sift a bit more overworld matter, uh, but we do have 46, again, ready to go. So someone in Twitch chat did suggest putting a wooden hopper here, feeding into the casting table. Uh, that way we can fill this up with blank sand casts and they are automatically placed in whenever the last one is used up, which uh, does help save a good deal of time there. So back over here, let's see, do we have what it takes to make the solar cooker and the reflector, so I'll bookmark both of those. So we don't have to keep coming back into the uh, the old quest book here. So for the solar cooker, we just need some glass and a chest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, I don't think we've made any glass pans so far, so I will just grab six and craft them up like so. And at that point, I think we are pretty much good to go. Boom. And then in terms of making the reflector, we're just missing three wooden slabs. Boom, and Boom. And uh, we can, of course, make uh, more in the future, should we want to speed it up. But for now, I do wonder if this needs to be able to see like the sun. Let's give it a try. If I put this down like right here and I put a reflector next to it. Like that. Does that work? I guess one way to find out if we grab a bit of sand and we throw that into here. Does that smell? No. Okay, so apparently sand doesn't work, but cobblestone should work, and it's not. So I assume we have to move this up to the surface. So let's quickly uh, repair the old hatchet here. And let's move this up, shall we? So 
So boom and boom. That does now have, look at that, the, the sun is on fire. And that works. Yeah, that's a, that's a furnace right there. So presumably, like it says, we can make it faster to increase the uh, the speed at which things cook. Right now, that, may be a, that might be a little slower than a regular furnace, maybe. But uh, it is automated. And I guess going forward, we could maybe pump into and out of that automatically uh, to just save on fuel, should we want to. Again, just to complete up some quests, we can craft up the uh, lead here. And in fact, chat, if we can get nine iron, what we can do then is we can use, uh, make an iron mesh, which we can then place uh, into one of our sieves in place of the, uh, the flint meshes here. And at that point, we can then start to get gold and silver pieces because you start getting gold and silver from the overworld matter if you sift it in an iron mesh. And at that point, we could finally get rid of those uh, sand casts altogether, uh, the guys that we're using over in the smeltery here, and replace it with a regular gold cast, which can be reused multiple times. Now, I don't think we're going to quite get enough iron from 34 overworld matter here. However, we can, of course, once again, grab two tin chunks along with one block of clay and then 100 leaves. Once again, we'll just drop all these in. Of course, that gets us another 80 blocks there. So we'll once again, re-engage all of the uh, extractors. And now chat, we just have to do enough sifting to get uh, nine iron ingots. So a slight detour here because um, Twitch chat has pointed out that there was a problem with my block breaker system. Uh, like down here, this drawer is out of sand, like fully empty. So is the red sand as well. Um, however, up here, the block breaker was full of sand. Uh, the reason for that is that we changed, uh, in the live stream, we changed the color of the pipe that goes into the draw controller from no color to black. So uh, what we've had to do here is change the color of the extracting pipe to black as well. And we should probably do that with some of these as well, like change this guy from having no color to being a black pipe. And uh, that should start extracting the cobblestone uh, when they're spaced down in the draw controller. And the same is true here as well. We'll change this to blank also to make sure that things keep on moving. Okay, so a bit of uh, sifting later, and we now have uh, eight molten iron ingots in the smeltery. And I'm gonna throw one more in here. This is one that we made earlier uh, because we need a full block. So we need nine molten iron uh, in the smeltery. And we have to pull that out over a flint mesh right here. So let's steal one of the pre-existing flint meshes that we have, drop that down in any one of these basins, I guess. We'll put it there. Once that iron is smelted, we can then pull that full block of iron over the flint mesh. And at that point, we should have an iron mesh, at which point we can then begin sifting even more of the overworld matter. And if we're gonna make one ingot gold cast, all we have to do is get, uh, I think, two gold ingots. Only just one gold ingot will work. So we only have to get four gold pieces and the odds of getting a gold piece with an iron mesh and overworld matter is one in three. So we really shouldn't have to sieve that much either. So we'll take this. Um, of course, eventually we're gonna wanna make maybe more of these so that we can both auto sieve with them in future auto sieves that we make, uh, but also so that we can put them into maybe an array of regular sieves if we want to do any manual sieving in the future. Uh, for now, I'm gonna get rid of this sieve because again, we don't want to be using uh, that flint mesh. We wanna make sure all of our overworld matter goes through the iron mesh to increase our chance of getting gold. And there we go, that is four gold pieces, making a gold chunk. We'll drop that into the smeltery and chat. Finally, after all this time, and after we just set up this wooden hopper here for the, uh, for the cast, we're actually gonna get rid of that wooden hopper because now, and again, let's just dump some stuff in here to free up some space, uh, because now we can get rid of this and we can hopefully say goodbye to the days of using sand casts. Hopefully, we can move forward and just reuse the same cast over and over again. Um, I think it's possible that uh, making a gold cast might consume the ingot. So just to be safe, I will drop a seared brick in here, something we're not too worried about losing. Uh, and if we do this, so we'll pull the molten gold over the seared brick there, and yeah, that does use up the uh, the bricks. So make sure you use something that you're not that you're willing to lose. Uh, the seared bricks are nice and cheap. But now we have an ingot gold cast, which we didn't get the achievement for because we actually also have to have a gold ingot. But we can now pull that last gold ingot out into the ingot gold cast, and then we can complete two quests at once. Just as soon as that enters this chest, perfect. And there we go. That is that 
little segment of the quest book complete. I'll claim all of those simultaneously. Uh, and I think, yeah, that's probably about where we're going to wrap things up for today. We're actually very close to completing the iron sieving portion of the quest book. All we need to do is smelt up one lead ingot, make this uh, upgrade, which I believe is for our backpack, and then uh, get some silver, combine the silver and gold together to make electrum, and then uh, also make a gear gold cast. So we can start making uh, gears like iron gears, copper gears, bronze gears, etc. Next time we will come back. Um, I think we'll start working maybe towards a little bit of mystical agriculture. Um, I would like to start working on some of these uh, farming quests and also getting some Inferium seeds. Uh, we'll also maybe look at uh, doing some more of the chapter challenge quests. I might even do some of this stuff between streams. Like a lot of this is just repeating stuff that we've already done. So I might start working on some of that. Um, I would like to work on getting more storage drawers. That's something we need to work on. Uh, and we can also, I guess, start looking at maybe making our first real machines as well, which would be uh, very useful, especially given that uh, the way that we actually make obsidian is through the blast chiller here. And for that, we just need to get a fluxed redstone coil, which is gold and a redstone alloy, uh, which shouldn't be too bad, honestly. Like we should be able to start making things like this now, like making electron plates, iron plates, and bronze gears is definitely something that we can finally start to work towards. So maybe our first uh, machines aren't gonna be too far away. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.